was the feeling in coming to the winner's circle, Mike? Because it was, it was like a second roar from the crowd. The place was jam-packed. I mean, this was like the, the greatest Super Bowl of all time, the, the, the best World Series of all time for racing fans, which we all are, even though you and I work in the game, we're fans too. You know, and it's one of the few times I've ever clapped for a horse and gotten that feeling. But what did you feel coming to that circle and seeing everybody looking up at that mob scene? It was just amazing. You know, to come back and, and see John Sherr's face was incredible. And to see him throw his Millridge hat. I mean, did they ever find that hat? <laughs> oh, you know, that thing is put on eBay. That thing is probably worth it. He would not get rid of that. He's had that hat since the Derby. So you can imagine what that hat means to him. I mean, he, he threw it in the crowd. I'm like, this is big. <laughs> this is a real big deal. You think about giving him your helmet to cover up? Oh, oh yeah. Throw the helmet too. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was just. A, just didn't let her down. That's all that, that really was going through my head, you know. But Mike, also you've talked many times about other big races where everyone's riding your horse and everyone knows where the favorite is. What kind of feel did you get in the classic when you were starting to pass horses? Did, did, did you get that feeling that anybody tried to force you wide or, you know, I mean, and that's part of the game. That's, yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to try to beat the other horse. It's, you know, it's not a popularity contest out there. Did you get any feel of that in a big race? No, I, I think it was a little different. You know, first of all, the field was a whole lot bigger. Now you're talking again. You know, you get the boys, and, and everyone, everyone literally had a shot in that race. I mean, so they weren't just looking for her. I mean, they were, they were making sure and keeping their eyes on the whole field. And honestly, at the at, at the three expo, I was just so focused on getting getting her somewhere, a clear shot to run that I don't care if I was gonna have to jump over someone. I was, I was gonna jump over someone. I think she could have done it if I had to. You know? And I mean, I was that determined. She was coming with such a a, a strong. You know, a strong move that if you just gave me this much room, I think if she just put her head in there, she would just knock them over like bowling balls. Of course, you don't want to, yeah. you know, survive an inquiry in the, in the Breeders Cup Classic, the last race of her career. So I was, I could have I actually followed Gio Pony on through, but then I was going to have to tap on the brakes and wait for him to get through. And, and I just saw the opportunity to get to the outside, and, and she loves to skip that way anyway. And she just did it so easy, and it was pretty much over after that. That's when I heard the big roar, you know. Uh, that was a mile and a quarter and watching her races I always thought that would be her best game and watching that I think now maybe a mile and a half and a mile and three quarters might be her best game. Is there any limitation to how far she could run? Not at all. I mean if you watch her train in the morning she, she'll go around there twice like it's nothing. And uh, she's caught everybody from three quarters to a mile and a quarter. I mean it doesn't matter who's in front of her, she'll, she'll catch him. I mean, we've done some things in the morning with her that, that would blow your guys' mind if you ever watch it. I mean, we got to where she couldn't no one could work with her. I, I just kept, I was, it was hurting them. I mean, it was like, she, they'd work with her once and they would be like, I ain't working with her again. That would be it, you know? So we'd have to, got to where we were using two horses. So one would break off, a green cat, a little horse called green cat would break off first and he'd take me only a quarter of a mile and then we'd let him quit. We'd let him give up. And then there'd be another filly that would wait for me just, just past the three pole who could really, really run. And she'd open up like five, six, seven on me, like real fast. And I'd catch her like it was nothing. I'd be like, God. I mean, people in the mornings would be going, what the heck? And it's a good horse you're running down. It's yeah. not, oh, not yeah. somebody to claim oh, her chasing. They were serious horses yeah. that, that she's running down. And it's the only way we could work her when you wanted a serious work. Otherwise, you just let her gallop and she'd go three quarters and 13. Right on, the money, on the money almost every time, you know. How, how much do you, did you and John Sheriff discuss strategy going to the Breeders' Cup Classic? But once that you guys decided that was the race, how much did you and John talk? Was there much, you know, strategy, pace, game plan, or, or, or is that pretty much you just go out there and hope for the best and ride? Zero. <laughs> none. <laughs> Zero. Absolutely none, man. We, John, he's, he's just an amazing man to ride for. You know, he believes in you, man. He believes in you. He knows that I know my job, and he's not going to tell me what to do. I'm certainly going to tell him how to train her. And he doesn't tell Mario how to groom her, and he doesn't tell me how to ride her. I mean, he just goes out there, and he just believes, you know, and he knows. When someone has that much confidence in you, it's just amazing because now I, I can really, I, I don't have to worry about his instructions. I can just do what I, what I feel is right, you know, and it makes your job a whole lot easier. Yeah. How long do you sit down, like, say that morning, for instance? You had other amounts, obviously, it was Breeders' Cup. You had lots of other important business, but got to be some point where you, you're like all of us, you get the racing form for the oh, class, and you start going to horse, you handicap, and you figure where I'm going to be, you know. How much time do you spend doing that for a big race like that? Since we knew he was going to run, it's been going through my head, you know, without without even looking at the form. But uh, you know, it's 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 funny. You got, I got usually I have, to, I have to pass everyone with her. So how do you handicap? Yeah, that? I mean, because you're going to be behind. I'm going to have to pass the field. She's going to spot them three or four links leaving there, and I just got to pass everyone. It's just about getting the trip. And uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you go around all the time. Well, they they would be balled up. I get to them so fast, and it's not like she has to go wide, 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 wide. She just go whoop, right around them and back. I mean, it was always pretty easy. Until everybody started fanning way out, then you had to do some things, you know. But 
I'd run the race in my head thousands, thousands, more than thousands of times. I mean, I didn't sleep for a week. <laughs> just every, every, which way you can imagine a race to be won, I, I ran it through my head, and then, then I had to just let go, man, because otherwise it's driving me nuts, you know, you have to just, just, I prayed about it, and just, I put it in his hands, and I said, go have fun, and I went ahead had a blast. Did you I, imagine Quality Road delaying the start for eight minutes? I didn't, yeah, that, one, that one I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that one. You figured it out. I was actually really worried when he, when he scratched, because he yeah. was my pace, I, I wanted him to, to go quick, and I knew he was one that was going to make him go quick, yeah. so when he was out of there, I was like, oh, man, now this, the pace ain't going to be near as fast, I got to be closer. It's the first thing that went in my head, and then she didn't think so, though. She was like, I'll show you. I don't care if they're pace or not pace. She's the only horse that I've really ridden that it, it, she'd make you pay no matter what. If you made, if you went slow, she'd make you pay because she couldn't. You didn't have her turn of foot. You certainly didn't have her stride. And if you went too fast, she'd make you pay. So I mean, it, it just didn't matter. She just always made you pay. <laughs> is, is it hard to imagine Mike getting on a, a mare like that? I mean, I, I, read, I read off the horses you've ridden: champion horses, Hall of Fame horses. She's above all of my assume. Oh yeah, without a doubt. There was one horse that I always kept saying, I don't know if she'd catch him. That was Holy Bull. Mm. But I think she'd have caught him. <laughs> or it'd be a close photo. Yeah. I think she'd have caught him. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure she'd have caught him. And Holy Bull was uh, I mean, one of the greatest been, horses we've seen in the last 20, 30 years. When he was on, there wasn't a horse in the world could beat him. Yeah. Really, there wasn't. I think she's the only one that could. Yeah. How much are you going to miss him, right? And, 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 and is today a little melancholy, a little bittersweet to say yes. she's coming out and that's going to be it? I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's neat though is, is that after she won, I was more worried about it before the race, but after she won, it, it made it okay. Yeah. I get an emotional. Yeah, 14 for 14 and uh, the streak lived. Uh, we, we touched on briefly today, Mike, you know, this is all well and good, all this sentimental stuff, but we got to cash some tickets today too. These guys want to know about some of your horses today too.